John from 3D Printing World and you haven't heard from me in a while and that's because I've been working on my project for Murph next year which I'll unveil at the end of this video so stick around if you want to see more about that. But first thing I wanted to talk about is Slice Engineering is releasing their new hotend on Kickstarter on Black Friday which is sort of a more cost effective version of Mosquito and I was given the opportunity to test it so in this video I thought I'd talk about it and some of my favorite features. So I was at Earth earlier this year and Chris, one of the founders of Slice Engineering, gave a presentation on the evolution of the hot end. And if you haven't seen it, I'll place a link in the description. But at the end of his presentation, he announced that they'd be releasing a new hot end on Kickstarter on Black Friday. And at the time, I was designing a printer to bring to Murph the next year, and I got the idea to contact them to see if I could get my hands on their hot end before er Murph to use on my printer. And to my luck, they actually had one that they could send me right away, and they also said that there'd be a feature on it that'd be perfect for my printer, which I'll get into later in this video. If you haven't seen the Copperhead Kickstarter, then you've noticed the premise of it is that it eliminates heat creep. If you don't know what heat creep is, heat creep happens when the, the, tra the heat is transferred from the cold side of the heat break to the hot end. And traditionally, this is from retractions and it is a common cause of clogs. The reason why the Copperhead is so good at eliminating heat creep is due to the bimetallic heat break, meaning that it's made of two materials. A traditional heat breaks made from a single material, normally stainless steel, but sometimes titanium, which has its downsides. In the case of the copperhead, the, the heat break is made from both copper and stainless steel tube. The copper is used on both the hot side and the cold side with a thin section of stainless steel connecting them together. The copper on the hot side maximizes the heat transfer to the filament while the copper on the cold side transfers unwanted heat to the heat sink. They are using a tube for a thin section of the break zone instead of machining out of a solid piece. They can have a much thinner wall that's also much stronger. And this is because the tube is strain hardened. And this is a method of cold working it where you pull the tube through a die which reduces its diameter and deforms the grains which makes it much stronger. Another cool aspect of the heat break is the connection between it and the heat sink. Instead of a threaded connection, the heat break is smooth and clamps onto the heat sink. This does two things. It better transfers the heat from the heat break to the heat sink, and even better, this feature allows you to adjust the height of the nozzle. This will make the hot end perfect for a dual extrusion printer or an IDEX. If you ever have a dual extrusion printer like my Flash Forge Creator Pro over there, then you know it's very hard to get the nozzles perfect, but this feature should make it very easy. When compared to the Mosquito, the Copperhead does have one downside, which is that it no longer supports the one-handed nozzle swap. This is because the clamp on the heat brake is not strong enough to keep from spinning when loosening the nozzle. The hot block does have the feature to improve swapping the nozzle, which I'll get into in a little bit. Copperhead uses a very similar copper alloy heat block as a Mosquito and it's similar in the way that the thermistor and heating cartridge mount but the Copperhead has a smaller section in front for wrench flats so you don't have to worry about damaging your thermistor wires. There's one other cool thing about the Copperhead which I had not discussed yet and that's that it's adaptable to almost any heat sink with a different variance of the heat break that they offer. This means, for example, say you're having issues with clogging on your Persa MK3 and you want to swap out the standard E3D heat break with a copperhead heat break and hot block. This can be done very easy and cost effectively because the only parts you need to change is the heat break and the hot block, which you can swap on an MK3 without even disassembling the extruder. The Kickstarter was almost more than 50% funded after a couple days. And looking at the packages, I'm really surprised that more people are not taking advantage of the $50 level. At this level, you get a bimetallic heat break, the thermal paste, and the hot block. This is all you really need to update your current printer to use this technology, as you can reuse the nozzle, heating cartridge, thermistor, and the heat sink that's already on the printer. 
The early bird package for $100 is already gone, but even the next level package is still a good deal when you consider the heater cartridge, thermistor, nozzle, cooling fan, and thermistor paste will normally cost you $115. Given the hot end for my project for Murph next year, but I thought since I had the hot end, I would put it on the mule bot and do some testing. I didn't do a lot of testing, but I did run some PETG, some PLA, and some TPU without any issues. If you're having issues with your current hot end clogging, or if you're having issues with a dual extrusion printer, you might consider backing this. Now at last, let's talk about my project for Murph next year. I'm calling it the Mule Dex. It's a, I'm designing an open source IDEX printer, and I found some really good sponsors. The idea of this printer is to design a well-documented, easy-to-build RepRap printer that anyone with a printer can make. The XY Kinemax is what makes this printer most special, as even though it's an IDEX, all the motors will be stationary mounted to the frame. First, the printer is going to use two copperhead hinds, which I'm most excited about. Previously, I was concerned about how it's going to ensure that the nozzles were level, but with the way the copperhead mounts to the heat sink, this won't be a problem. And since there's no moving motors, I wanted the extruder carriages to be light as possible. So I'm going to use two of Zesty Nimble's newly re released Remote Drag Drive version 2 extruders, which is going to be awesome. My second concern was finding quality square rail linear bearings that were not ridiculously expensive. But fortunately, I recently discovered that LDL Motors has linear rails, so I'm going to be using those along with their motors too. They're going to make a low inertia hollow pancake motor specially formulated for the gear ratio of the nimble extruder which I am really excited about. The printer is also going to use a belt to Z axis for finer resolution and to eliminate Z wobble. I'll be relying on the detent torque of the stepper motors with a planetary reducer to keep the bed from dropping should power be lost. The belt drives are separated for auto bed leveling with a kinematic coupled bed. I'll be using a Kinovo silicone pad for the, to heat the bed and also using Generine gates, pulleys, and belts from Philistruders so I don't have to worry about cheap belts or idler pulleys failing. I'll also be sourcing a Duet 3 main board and expansion board from them as well. If you want to know more about this printer, I'll have more content about it on my channel soon. But I thought it was really cool for Slice Engineering to release an open source hotting geared for the RepRap community, so I thought I'd make this video first. At the very least, check out their Kickstarter and maybe consider backing it. If you're interested in building the Mule Decks next year, make sure you back too. Yeah.